Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to show you how you can get clearer exception stack traces in .NET by using a package called ben.demystifier. ben.demystifier is a new git package created by Ben Adams and we're going to use that in this project. I'm going to show you what it does and I'm going to show you why I'm personally using it everywhere because it really makes things way, way easier when it comes down to troubleshooting an issue. So I'm going to go straight into the code. I'm going to show you what I have here. It's a very simple application where you have um, a main method where we're calling something that's calling the GitHub API and then it's validating the request with a very unusual way but I'm doing this to demonstrate how having a lambda would actually impact the stack trace uh, with something being thrown in that and then I have a, a nested or a local function to also have another level of um, the stack trace something that usually happens and it um, it looks weird in the stack trace. So first things first, I'm going to just run this code and I'm going to log the exception and see what I get out of it. So the reason why I'm getting a 403 forbidden is because I don't have, I think the, I'm missing a header when I'm calling the API. So I'm getting a forbidden back. But this really demonstrates the point because as you can th see here, we get things like g underscore underscore uh, pipe one underscore zero uh, pipe uh, underscore underscore b four like these things what do they mean to you I know like in my mind I've become so used to this because I, I know from the patterns that they usually have um, what they mean but when you get some new engineer or junior engineer in C sharp and you're trying to explain these things you kind of have to let them learn by experience and it's a really hard and frustrating thing to do. Exceptions hasn't really been improved in C-Sharp and the reason why you can't easily do it after the fact is because you have all those monitoring systems that might be looking, for example, for this very string, um, this very weirdly looking string. And even though it's weirdly looking, it might be doing a partial check on that to throw an alert. So if you go ahead and retroactively update your C-Sub version and fix that, you might break that system. Um, and that's just one of the reasons um, that this might happen. So this is not really what I would call a clear stack trace. And this is very um, minimal as well. Usually have way more uh, stacks in the stack trace. But I'm going to close that for now and I'm going to go to NuGet and I'm going to install a package called ben.demystifier. And it's this very first one that you're going to see. I'm going to install that now and with that installed the only method that you need to actually worry about is an extension method called dot demystify and i'm going to add a couple of lines here i'm going to add a new line and then i'm going to also print e dot demystify which is what we get from the package this didn't exist before and i'm going to run this project again and show you what we get and in order to see exactly what we get, we are going to take this and put it in two separate uh, files. One will go uh, here. I actually copied the whole thing. I didn't want to copy the whole thing. I'm going to delete this bit and delete up to that line and then the demystified exception in a separate file. Um, and I'm going to do a comparison on them. So on the left, we have the old bad, uh, dirty exception. And on the right, we have the clean one. And let's compare. First, you can see that it's actually adding a few things. For example, it's adding the exact type that is throwing. And it's the type of the method that the, the specific call um, actually returns. And that's helpful because, for example, we can now see without having to assume based on the uh, async suffix that this is an async task method and this is an async task that doesn't string uh, which wasn't there before what I noticed preparing for this video is that sadly um, the old dirty uh, exceptions do have the string username for uh, the local function but the mystifier threw that away um, so there is an issue there that I might actually end up reporting um, but you get to see that you know it properly adds um, the, the brackets and then we'll add parameters and arguments if they're there it tells you that this is a lambda it it makes things way more legible and way more clear and you might say okay Nick this is a, a minor example it didn't really make my life easier but 
thing not not as if you're looking at this single error in a in a page in your id think of it like you having a logging system and having to go through many alerts and see what exception was thrown and what exactly happened which part of the code this happened i think that it's way more easy to do that having the exception on the right and having the exception on the left now what you might say is that this is a very simple straightforward scenario and you didn't actually gain anything out of it so what i want to do instead is i'm going to clear this for this um, files and we just put the exceptions in and i'm going to comment this whole thing out and i'm going to go to this big scale uh, program and let me just quickly update a couple of things here this is a copy paste from the uh, ben.demystify package and it shows effectively the worst case scenario where ben is calling you probably all of the types of things that you will see like iterators with yield returns um, generic classes um, async methods with generic parameters all those things and to make it clear these things that you see here these uh, attributes will prevent the the jit um, from optimizing during runtime this operation by potentially stripping off um, the whole uh, method and we're doing that because in the new main program we're calling this twice once to write the original exception and again to demystify it which could optimize it so we don't want that so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to run this program and this program exactly like the other one will print the original exception and then will print the demystified one and i'm going to grab the original one from here and you don't really need to know exactly what happened here just think of it like a chain of all possible exception stack traces that you will see in a single stack trace uh, just so we can focus on hey how is this optimizing over everything and i'm going to put the other one in the mystified exception and i'm going to do the same thing where we compare now this might look a bit hectic at first um, so i'm gonna scroll and try to explain but as we saw before we have the type of the thing that actually was thrown here we instead of having this little um one or two for generics to indicate which uh how many generic types this has it will actually grab the generic type names and put them here and same goes for the uh, for example here it's using int 32 while here we're going to use int which is what we are actually using in our code we will also again grab the name for both generic types exactly as they are in the method to make it clearer in the scenario where you have a tuple you will actually get the tuple um, format here with the exact names as well if there is a name for example the string val um, the lambdas won't look like an incomprehensible monster they will actually look like real things real um methods with proper uh, uh names and types it will indicate whether it's a lambda or not um whether there are uh there's an array of things it it really 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 and i cannot stress this enough once you go once you go there you cannot go back um it really makes things way way more simpler and way way more clearer now i understand that this is a small video but in scenarios like this i want to use my platform to move the entire dotnet community forward or at least the people who are watching me and this is such a small thing that can really make such a huge change so i thought i would bring it um to your attention in case you weren't aware uh, of it even though it has millions of downloads in NuGet, um, you should definitely be using this that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making this video possible if you want to support me as well you're going to find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well and i'll see you in the next video keep coding